Good afternoon. This is Between the Lines Live at SandusKeyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerholt, Managing Editor of the Register, and my guest today is Councilwoman Monica Stark from Vermilion. She's a candidate for mayor, and this is our fourth of four interviews with the Vermilion mayoral, mayoral candidates. Uh, there's four people on the May 2nd ballot. Voting's already started. Uh, the top two vote-getters will face off in the November general election. We're going to be joined by Monica in just a moment, but before I go there, I want to mention that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors for Erie County residents age 60 and better. When you need help, call Serving Our Seniors, 419-624-1856. Uh, also, all of our segments of Between the Lines Live are available at Sandusky Register slash BTL. We just had former Representative Steve Krause on our program talking about his effort to get a new trial, uh, to overturn his 2015 conviction. It's a pretty interesting story, so if you have a chance, please watch that and the other programs on Between the Lines. We'll also mention that the Vermilion mayoral debate from a couple weeks ago is available at SanduskyRegister.com as well. So if you're interested in that race, you're a Vermilion resident, or if you know a Vermilion resident, tell them to go to SanduskyRegister.com and find the Vermilion debate. It's a pretty good debate. With uh, Aaron McLaughlin's here with us again today. And Aaron, was there anything I missed? Nope, you got it. Do you want to say hello? Uh, All right, and we'll start now, and I'll introduce uh, Vermilion Councilwoman Monica Stark. Thank you for being on the program. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And you are a candidate for mayor, and you're in your second term. I am. Your second two-year term. Two-year term in city council. I serve as council at large. Council at large. Mm -hmm. So that means you you represent all Vermillion residents. The entire residents. community, yes. Those on the Lorain County side of the border and the Erie County that side is correct, of the border. Yes. Why do you want to be mayor? I want to be mayor. You know, Vermillion is the best hidden secret I think around we have such a great community um, I am raising my six children in Vermilion and it six is children six children it has just been um, a pleasure to be there with my family um, we have such great community organizations we have such great citizens I've really enjoyed serving on council and helping the citizens to solve problems and I'd like to continue that as mayor if you're elected, what would be your top priority? My top priority, if elected, will be, of course, like everybody else, we need to bring some more business to Vermillion. Okay. Um, we need to br build our business base because that's going to build our tax base, mm -hmm. which is going to trickle down and it's going to help us to fix our infrastructure. It's going to help us with all of our other issues. Okay. And is there a particular type of business you would target, or are there different types of businesses that you think? You know, you, you I would think? target all types of business. Mm -hmm. I would target retail. We have a, a huge section of our city that's from um, probably Vermilion Road and east to the bridge um, that goes over the, over the railroad tracks. Lots of open retail space there for business. I would uh, be calling businesses on a daily basis, visiting them. Um, I would just be contacting them constantly to get mm -hmm. those buildings mm -hmm. filled. Um, east of that bridge is a little bit more of an industrial area. So I would also be contacting those sorts of businesses mm -hmm. to bring those mm -hmm. to that area. Okay. Um, I know that it was mentioned about having an industrial park off of Baumhart Road. Okay. Which we do have an area that we could use for that, although we don't have all of the um, infrastructure infrastructure built there yet. We do need to bring infrastructure there. So, so w water lines, sewer lines, those what, what do is not it? exist out they there at this exist, point. So, so that would those. be something that maybe we could look into partnering some, with some other entities to see about how to get those. Those are very costly items to mm -hmm. bring into an area. So mm -hmm. I would definitely be looking at that. If in fact those items were already in place, that would be a happening area. You to, would already yes. have. So, so is that is that a top priority? Is to build the infrastructure? Um, I would not call that a top priority. Mm -hmm. That would be something that I would definitely would work towards. Mm -hmm. I would say let's fill those empty buildings first. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. fill those areas that we have infrastructure mm -hmm. below, and mm -hmm. we don't have to do that type of work. So, and, and as mayor and as a councilwoman, it's been mentioned that there are absentee landlords. How do you combat that? Were the rents too high or not realistic? Or you know, as mayor, 
that's a real hard thing to combat. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. think that we can call and talk to them. Sometimes just some conversations mm -hmm, happening mm -hmm. would a lot mm -hmm. of times go a long way. Just, mm -hmm. you know, friendly, positive conversations. Let's see what we can do together. Let's partner with these landlords mm -hmm. to see what the city can do. Partnering together is a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the certainly the opioid addiction in general has been, you know, claimed to be a number one uh, problem, mm -hmm. not only in Vermilion, but in Ohio. In fact, we're the number one opioid abuser when it comes to death, I think. Right, right. So how does a mayor uh, be part of that battle? What, what, um, what would you do? Once again, the mayor can partner. The mayor her, herself isn't going to, per se, change that. But we can partner with, you know, we have a wonderful police force who has been battling this firsthand. They mm -hmm. have firsthand knowledge of this. Our police chief, so many years back, took a full-time officer and made him a detective to so be working on that. We've mm -hmm. had that for a long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So Vermilion has already been working at it in different ways mm -hmm. than a lot of communities are. Um, we would need to partner with the school district, which the school district does a lot for the students already. Mm -hmm. I work at the school, so I know some of the things that they're working on. I know that um, we need to partner with organizations. We have all kinds of wonderful organizations. You were at the march, and sure. you saw all the wonderful organizations. Yes. They're there to help people, and a lot of citizens don't realize oh my gosh, these, these organizations are here to help and I just need to get in contact with them. They help family members, they help people who are suffering. So. And you mentioned the march, it was the recovery march in early March, yes. I think it was. Yes. And it was still cold then. It was very cold. <laughs> but it was, uh, it, it was, what was that, a 10 mile march? I'm not sure what the mileage on it, it was. Yeah. It seemed like a long <laughs> march, but it was well attended. It was, yes. And uh, there was a lot of... Um, uh, solidarity. Right. And, and, and it's not a Vermilion problem. It's right. not a Erie County problem. It's a statewide problem. It's across our country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once again, if we can build our businesses, we get a broader tax base. We have more money. The county has more money. Mm -hmm. Peter Shade at the Erie County uh, Health Department is doing wonderful mm -hmm. things trying to combat this problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our tax base, well, their tax base will you, help. How do you feel about the uh, Genesis? Genesis on the Lake? Yes. It's a wonderful program. Genesis on the Lake yes. is in Vermilion Township, I it believe. It is, it is, yes. Uh, but it's, uh, 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 it's a sober living community. And it's one of it's a, one of the several parts of a full circle of care mm -hmm. for addiction, and, right. and that was a big accomplishment. You mentioned right. Pete Shade, who certainly was a player in making that happen, as well right. as county commissioners. And, Definitely. Definitely. And that was established without uh, any grumbling or mm -hmm. very little. Yeah, I. In Vermilion, I have not heard any grumbling about that whatsoever. And, and so I, everybody feels very positive. It's about a very, that. it's a really victory. There's mm -hmm. this thing called NIMBY. Do you know what NIMBY means? I do not. Uh, not in my backyard. Okay. And and there was, you know, a squoosh. You know what a squoosh is? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> it's a tiny amount. There was just a tiny amount of NIMBY, not in my backyard, and then that okay. dissipated, and, yeah. and and Genesis on the Lake has been yeah. been operating for about a year now, t serving seven, 27 families, I think. Is it that many? It's, it's wonderful. I know it's a point that when people start coming together, they get uh, people who are going through their treatment, and they get them jobs, and they Women start and bringing, children, their, yeah. Yeah, bringing the children back to moms, and you know, that kind of thing. It's a wonderful... Make you mentioned you situation. work for the school district. I what do. do you do? I'm an administrative assistant at the Board of Education. Okay, and how long have you done that? Uh, I'm in my third year. Okay, and is there a role model? I mean, do you have a, someone in mind that said, I want to be a mayor, this is, you know? I, I don't have a role model in mind, somebody that I've looked at and said, I want to be just like that person. I want to be a reachable person that, you know, my door will always be open as mayor. You'll be able to walk into my office. I will sit down and talk to you. I will answer my phone calls. I'm not gonna be a mayor that's gonna be sitting behind your desk and saying, oh, let so-and-so take care of that. Let so-and-so take care of this. I'll be out there partnering with our community, with our citizens. Okay. And um, who do you think's gonna win? Well, I hope I'm gonna win. <laughs> but you know, it's very hard to tell. I get asked that question all the mm -hmm. time. and. 
you know, you just don't know. There's a, and what is your what's your campaign strategy to win? My campaign strategy to win is to be myself. Is to be yourself. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna say I'm something else and try to be all that that I'm not. I am an honest person. I love to talk to people. I enjoy when I go out. I take my signs. I don't have a committee that's taking my signs out. I do it myself. So you're going door to door? I am doing some door to door. Yes, yes. I I do have a committee that's working with me with that, but I am doing it also. And I love it when people approach me. I get people that'll come up to me and they'll say, oh, I, I know you're busy and you probably don't want to hear about this, but can I ask you a question? I love to hear about things because if people don't talk to me about it, I don't know. And I can't promise you I'm going to fix that for you. I'm going to figure that out. I can't always promise that. But I can say, now that I know what's going on, I'm going to do my best mm -hmm. to find a, a solution. And you have you. an idea what this is going to look like because you've been on council for three, four, almost four years? Yes, yes. And so you know how council works. How right. does council work? Is it functional or does it work? We have a wonderful council, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, we have a great council that works together. You know, we don't always agree. We have those... Uh, meetings that you know there's a little bit of back and forth sometimes but that's what it's about it's working it out solving it together and uh, you know once again as mayor I'm not going to take all my own ideas of what I want to do I want the citizens input I want to know what the citizens want we're having um, a lot of discussions now whether we should keep our water plant or whether we should get our water from somebody else and a couple months ago at a com committee meeting I said Let's have a meeting. Let's bring the citizens in. I want to know what they want. I've been elected in this position not to make all the decisions for the community, mm -hmm. but to give the decisions that the community wants as I gather what they want to do together. Mm -hmm. I, it's, mm -hmm. it's a group effort once mm -hmm. again. You know, It's not all about me, but it's what the citizens mm -hmm. want, and I'm representing and the citizens. Do you have an opinion on the Waterworks plan? I do. I was the first uh, council rep in the February meeting to say, I would like to see us keep mm -hmm. our water plant. Um, find a way to build the upgrades. Find a way to, to keep it. Um, right now, it's sitting with the EPA. We're getting uh, an engineering company that's going to look at our intake. Once we figure out if our intake's going to be acceptable for the EPA, then we can move forward with saying, okay, we're going to keep it. We're going to finish these upgrades. You know, it's a work in progress, just mm -hmm. like so many things. You're never going to be done with that. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be things that need to be done. But we need to be smart with it, and we need to continue it. We need to, unfortunately, a lot of the past administrations have not done that. All of a sudden, it's all on our lap to say, oh, my gosh, the roads are bad, the, the infrastructure, the water lines are bad, the water plant's bad, you know. I think that a lot of the past administrations, if they could have been working towards keeping things mm -hmm. up, not just putting some band-aids on things, it would have been better. But you are a fan of the current mayor. I am a fan of the current mayor. Uh, mayor Eileen Bulon. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I need yeah. to do better. Yeah. Uh, In fact, if she was running again, I would not have chosen to run. Um, she's done a fine job for the community. She's brought us a long way. I want to continue us down that road and bring us a whole lot further. And all four candidates for mayor shared a similar view yeah. of Mayor Bulin's mm -hmm. service to the community. After right. eight years, she decided right. not to run for another right. election. she's retiring. Uh, and uh, you mentioned that you have six children, mm -hmm. and the youngest is? My youngest is 11. She is in the fifth grade at middle school in okay. Vermilion. Um, my oldest is 23. Okay. He just got out of the Navy okay. and is living at home again. Um, yeah, I have three adult children, and I have three, my 16, 13, and 11 that are still in school. So, so how do you I don't have six two-year-olds. I, you know, I guess I, I guess once they're, they're a little they're, older, yeah. it's not as. And they all help to, each other. Yeah. They're you know they're great with that. We all help each other. We're a team. We get along. We. We do it all together. So maybe that's why it? you're good How on council. How do I counsel? do it with yes. that? First of all, if you want something done, you ask a busy person. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. That's, you know. Is that, that a campaign that, slogan? No, that, that's not a that's campaign a slogan. That's an old saying. Yeah. You know, my dad always said that. Uh -huh. You know, he would always say that about me. Everything I would do, he's like, how do you keep up with all that? And, you know, then he goes, well, I guess it's because you want something done. Interesting. You ask a busy person. Um, 
I right now I work at the school full time. Uh -huh. I, I think I'm the only candidate. I don't know, I don't know Mr. Perry's hours of how often he mm -hmm. works, how often his shop is open. I, I have no clue, but I hold a 40-hour-a-week job, mm -hmm. so I'm mm -hmm. running as mayor, running for mayor, holding a 40-hour-a-week job mm -hmm. with six kids in city council. So you know, my focus when elected will all be in one place. I won't be juggling a couple of different jobs. So okay. it will be a very much more focused, so. All right, well, I wanna thank you for, first off, participating in the debate. Mm -hmm. How did, did you enjoy the debate? I did enjoy the debate, It was yes. uh, in front of the Vermilion High School students. It was very fun to hear their reactions to things and uh, to hear their questions. They had good they questions. They had ideas of questions. You yeah. know, whenever we do those debates, we, uh, we have a reserve list of questions. Mm -hmm. And I think we only asked one question. It was just as a follow-up to one of their questions. So mm -hmm. they hit all the marks on that debate. And Good. thank you for participating in it. Thank you. For thank you for being a guest on Between the Lines. Thank you for having me. And we certainly uh, wish you the best of luck on thank election you. night. And in any event, you're going to continue serving on council. I do plan to. Through your term. Yes, yes, definitely. And we look forward to talking to you after the election. And if you're right. one of the top two, you'll be facing off against someone. That's right in November, so we'll That's talk right. again. Look forward to it. Thank you very okay, much for being a you. guest on Between the Lines. That's it for this edition of Between the Lines, live at SandusküRegister.com.